Hello, everyone. I'm Jean-Claude Abion Mystic, and welcome to this very special edition of A Break in the Clouds with Penny Kelly. You can find her work at consciousnessonfire.com as well as here on YouTube at Penny Kelly. Penny Kelly, welcome back to the show. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm very good. How's everybody out there? Um, how are you? What's happening? I'm <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing well. I think the audience members are doing well also. We're a little bit shook up with the full moon uh, energies in the last couple of days. Quite a bit of us are, but we're excited to talk to you here today. We noticed that you just posted uh, here today on June 15, your latest look-see. So I guess we could start there tonight and then we could talk about this pulling the plug interview that Bill Holter had uh, with uh, Greg Hunter on USA Watchdog and how that relates to a lot of your previous looksies and everything is starting to come together here in a much clearer picture. So Penny first, welcome back to the show and everyone welcome back. Uh, thank you for being here. We're gonna try to take some questions from you guys also maybe at the later end of the show, but we'll start uh, with sharing some of our information's insights as to how to decode this crazy, crazy world we live in. <laughs> Betty, where do you want to start? Oh, my. Um, there is no beginning. There is no end. So we're going to start in the middle. OK. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, first, I would say that um, one, of the, one of the things that I see is that it's actually kind of quiet for a few weeks, um, maybe another month, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and then it starts getting a little uh, noisy and a little bit chaotic again. But I think that period, what I would say to people is, oh, my God, take that time, renew, restore, get ready, because um, it gets a little hectic going through um, August, September, October, November. Mm -hmm. um, then there was a light at the end of the tunnel that I was not expecting. So I, I got a whole bunch of stuff to share. and. I'm afraid I'm going to hog all the time and all the talk, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that I would really like to share that sort of all came together today. Um, that's, so, why we're, that's why we're here, Penny. So <laughs> get okay. uh, let me know. Like, do you want to start with outlining a little bit the last look? See, do you want to start with that okay. dream uh, a, a, uh, analysis? Where, you tell me where you want to go. I do have a few specific questions that I lined up for tonight, but I'll try to put them where they're appropriate in, in your timeline there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm, I was doing the look see for June 15th. And and I was expecting to see really rough time. And I did see a really rough time, September, October, November, December. Uh, November was really dark. It was mm -hmm. really not, a lot of people were really down, um, depressed. It was not a, not a fancy Thanksgiving by any stretch. Um, and so a lot of people were alone. And I and so I moved into December looking to see, okay, what happens there. And when I got into December, I saw more of the same. But then, I, you know, my thought was, okay, let's move ahead two or three months. And I skipped ahead to like February. And it was peaceful and it was quiet and people were relaxed more relaxed, not completely, but there was uh, there was such a change in in the mindset and the attitude of people that I thought my immediate thought was, "What's wrong? <laughs> what happened?" Right. So, um, so I backed up as soon as I asked that question, "What happened?" I heard a single word, and that word was "coup," and I thought, "Oh, mm -hmm. um, what came with that that word?" <clears throat> was this picture, uh, this uh, impression, if you will, that somebody, I didn't know who, um, had or some group had said, that's enough. I'm done. We're done with this. And they stepped in and, they, and the Biden thing was over. And martial law was in place. But everybody was like, yay, martial law. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a weird world when we're actually saying yay to yeah. that? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, and that was like, there was a turning point there. There were some other things that I saw when I got into next year. Um, 
they, they, you know, there's people who who still keep fighting, who keep trying to keep things ugly. But mm -hmm. by and large, there was a big change, a big change, and I was just like, holy cow. <laughs> I so just I, to be clear for the audience members who think we're trying to be pessimistic here, you're talking about a very big change to the positive, to the upside yeah, for humanity, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. People <laughs> so were sure. working together. People were communicating. People were kind of moving around. Nobody had any money. Right. Nobody had any money. Um, so there was this sense of, um, okay, we're all flat broke. Um, nobody cared about that. Uh, they, there were shortages of a lot of things. There was an uncertainty, a deep uncertainty about whether we would be secure as a nation. Um, but that didn't seem to be the issue next February. And so I, I just thought, wow, we have, there's been a change. So that, that was, you know, what I saw in part of the look-see. So then today I'm running around and I'm dealing with um, all sorts of mundane stuff. And um, and I noticed this uh, announcement that Trump had, uh, Trump supported people had gotten into the primary, a couple more people. Um, and I didn't bother to stop and look. I just, I think I read it in the Epoch Times or saw that as a headline. And I thought, Trump's getting all those people set up to be in the House of Representatives and in the U.S. Senate so he can return. And that then struck me as, uh-oh, <laughs> two things immediately came up around that. One was what I had seen with the election, the midterm election. It, it just didn't really happen. Um, there was uh, in September, October, right up to the election, there were all kinds of shootings. There was all kinds of chaos. There was all kinds of financial difficulty. Um, there were shortages. There was an introduction of some new medical problem, quote unquote, medical problem. And people were afraid. It was so chaotic. People were afraid to come out of their house. And so the election, and there wasn't any energy, there was no electricity in some places. <laughs> that was a, like, oh no. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the election came and went, and there were so many places that didn't open or that people didn't show up at all, uh, or there was absolute and utter chaos that they ended up saying, we can't declare anything. And that right there was, you know, it was really discouraging. I thought, well, maybe we shouldn't have expected anything from the 2022 midterms because we didn't deal with the 2020, you know, national election. And so I was um, then aware that uh, Trump had been putting all those people in place so that he could return. And I remembered a dream by um, by what's his name, 107, and he writes about it in this. And I'll read a little bit of the dream, but you know, one of the things that I do is interpret dreams. Okay. Um, so he's um, he's on a boat, 107 is traveling somewhere on some big ship, and he says, In my sleep, I suddenly saw myself standing in the middle of an older church that was tall, long, and narrow. And churches are the symbol of belief systems. Doesn't have anything really to do with religion. It has to do with the structure of someone's beliefs. And he was thinking at the time that it was a Protestant style church, Protestant. He's, it's a, you know, he believes that he's protesting something or standing up for something according to his beliefs. Um, and as he stood in the aisle about three quarters of the way to the back, he could see the sanctuary at the front of the church. And he says, I saw what seemed to be a pastor at a podium, but he wasn't dressed in the usual robes. Instead, he wore more of a suit as he stood centered at the top of some steps with an altar behind him. So the pastor at the podium is not dressed usually. Something about the leadership guiding belief systems is not 
Um, not only is it past, this is a pastor, but he's not dressed in his usual clothes. And, um, and he's at the top of some steps. Steps are, you know, taking steps towards something with an altar behind him. And that's a plan to alter things, to change things. So as he glanced around to gather, uh, this is one, one glanced around to gather the situation, he noticed painted glass windows coming through them was appeared to be afternoon light with just a shade of shadow. And he noticed people scattered throughout the church, nobody sitting together. Mm -hmm. In other words, nobody is believing in something. The structure of belief has been pretty disrupted, okay? Mm -hmm. And the church is long and tall and narrow. I uh, mean, it has high aspirations, but it's too narrow. And it's a long process of trying to um, get people to believe again. So anyways, um, he said there were maybe a dozen parishioners in the church, but nothing like the few hundred that the church would have held if it had been filled. So that said right there that the beliefs of the population have dwindled away to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. A dozen people. So then he looks around and he, and he hears this sound coming from behind him. And he says, I realized I had just heard the last note from a song. So that that's a song is music to your ears. Okay. Something you want to hear. And he's heard the last of that. He isn't going to hear what he wants anymore. Um, and he sees a choir loft behind and above him. And, um, and they were wearing robes and he talks about the robes a little bit, but he says, and uh, he noticed what looked like bright red blood on the sleeves of a few and there was a hint of the teeth looked like they had been shaved to points, like they were ghoulish mm. um, on those singers. So that says right there, there's something wrong with the music that's being played, with the story, et cetera. Um, at least one person had blood on the side of their face. And the group didn't seem like a normal church choir at all. And there was a certain tension in the air that gave him an uncomfortable feeling. So he's describing the atmosphere that he finds himself in, in the midst of trying to hold this belief that things are going to right themselves. They're going to correct themselves. So he starts to turn away, but something in the loft caused him to look over his other shoulder. And he sees this, these two guys up in the choir loft. One is wearing a blue suit, a white shirt, and a blue tie, light blue tie. Um, the blue suit, as soon as he said that, I thought, this is Trump. This is Trump. He's talking about Trump. The light blue tie indicates that he's tied to something that is going to cause the blues, going to be sad, going to be not, not work out, etc. And there's a couple of ropes hanging down from the middle of the ceiling that you would see like in a circus. You know, uh, the people on the trapeze that get on these swings and they, they there was a platform on this on these ropes. He says, um, exceptionally long, slightly sagging ropes hanging down from the middle of the ceiling, like those you would see with a trapeze swing at a circus, where there's a wooden board that the person swinging would sit or stand on. There was a hand holding one end of the rope swing and it was um, the, there were two men in the, in this, uh, choir loft. And he says, um, the guy with the blue suit steps up onto the edge of the choir loft wall, you know, usually about three feet tall. So people don't fall. <laughs> um, and he, he steps off on this swing and he swings all the way up to the sanctuary and all the way back. And, and so, you know, he's, what he says, I'll skip over some of it. Um, he said the, uh, hang on. As I watched the balcony, I was afraid this person was going to do something that would really get him hurt. It seemed like such grandstanding and I didn't see the point. 
As the man grabbed onto the ropes and stepped onto the swing, he seemed to be holding them tightly, and I could tell he was fearful, but almost robotic in his facial expression, with nearly black eyes looking straight forward. Um, so the, the guy swings, you know, a couple times, and then he crash lands, and his head splits open, and there's blood all over. And he said, the swing had too much momentum. I remember thinking of the basic physics. With that start high up at the back of the church, like a pendulum, swinging in a clock, he was going to arc much higher on the upswing than they anticipated. The top of the follow through would nearly match the height he took off from in the back, which of course it did. And he hadn't gotten off at the altar area hmm. like plan. Instead, he swung all the way back and, um, and then it swung forward again. And they, he was going to try and make a leap, but the, it was too big of a leap and he was moving too fast. And um, so he would have had to throw himself from the swing and then try stopping quickly before he slammed into the altar. And long story short, um, you, you, he has a few more details, but the bottom line is that, um, you know, he ends up swinging and hitting the pews and crash landing and breaking open his head. Um, and what Wino Seven realizes at the end of the dream is that this isn't going to happen. And and he just, and he, he doesn't ever say who the, the guy on the swing is, but I think it's Trump. Um, and he describes him a couple of times that very close to the way Trump, you know, acts and dresses, et cetera. And when I first read this, I thought, oh, wow. He said, I momentarily locked eyes with a woman standing near where he hit. And I recognized her, too, as a public figure. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she was Indian flashed through my mind, like she might be from Sri Lanka. But uh, he said, when his board hit that half dozen pews in front of me and to the right of the aisle, the man could not hang on. And there was nothing I could do but watch. He catapulted off the swing into the air, flipping completely upside down as he flew toward me and abruptly stopped when the side of his head, just above his left eye, slammed hard into the top corner of the pew. It was a really awful sound and it bothered me. A gasp went out through the crowd, including from the choir loft above. Um, it was a vivid, shocking image. He crumpled, flipped again, as the collision ricocheted him into the middle of the aisle, he landed at my feet. So he was looking sideways, but his eyes showed what was probably his last moment of consciousness. His skull was cracked open horribly, and part of it was laying in the aisle on the ground behind him. The gruesomeness shocked me severely. So that dream was a, a dream for 107 that was telling him, look, you're supporting something, you're doing something that you think is absolutely necessary, here's the outcome. And it's, it, you know, all of a sudden, I haven't thought about that dream since I got the book right. <laughs> here. Um, and that really, it struck me um, that that uh, was a warning to him that said, prepare, this isn't going to work out like you think it will. Um, and that, I think, is what comes together this fall. Trump is holding off. He's not coming in. He's not um, stepping up to deal with Biden and the whole goofy team that's pretending they're in Washington, D.C. Um, he is hoping to get everybody in place. Then he's going to return. But it doesn't look like the doesn't look like it works out that way. So. Wow. Um, Okay, uh, a couple of things. Well, first, thank you for that. And Beth and a few other people are saying, wow, yeah, this is important because <coughs> a lot of our audience members did read the book. I think you and I yeah. talked about this dream last year, at least six months yeah. ago. So in one of our videos, we're trying to figure this out. Yes, I know. It's really cool to look at it now with a few more, like, uh, how do you say, 
with more water having gone under the bridge, we're getting a little bit more clarity as we move forward. Now, yeah. what you were talking about trying to set up uh, the GOP primaries here, this was in the news course two days ago, just wanted to back you up on what you were saying. There you go. Um, now, what's interesting there too, there's a comment on the screen, uh, Bernard, Bernard uh, he's saying, hey, the, is it possible that the guy in the swing is actually Brandon? and not Mr. T? Like, if you were to look at that back also, you could say, huh, maybe somebody is swinging and crashing and burning. Uh, that's also part of the picture. Uh, what do you make of this? If you were to, go to put a percentage, is it possible also that that's the actual vision here that one was seven was looking at? I would say, yes, it's possible. But... 107 would not have had the reaction to the dream that he had. He never says in the dream, uh, in the book, who he, he said, right. I recognize the guy on the swing. He right. never says who that is because I think he knows. That, I mean, if it was Biden, he would have shared that. He would have celebrated that. Instead, he had this terrible reaction. He couldn't sleep. He had to call somebody and say, oh, my God, I just had this dream. Can you help me figure this out? And they made some sort of. Uh, interpretation of it that I thought that is garbage. Excuse me, forgive me for whoever interpreted that dream for one. Right. But um, that's um, you I make a, you make a good point. Um, it seems like a somber event, whereas if it was in fact Brandon, exactly. uh, in the view at least of one seven, who's a big promoter. Uh, of Mr. T, he wouldn't be having the same reaction. So that, that's a good indicator for sure. Um, the blue pale tie, I thought I'd bring this up on the screen just for imagery for the audience members. And of course, on one hand, we have this, uh, yep. we have a lot of hopes and dreams there. And, but on the other hand, we have this guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, it's just like dumber and dumber all over again uh, on, <laughs> on on absolute steroids. It's absolutely you know? fascinating to see. Now, uh, a few psychics were looking at the fact um, they were getting that perhaps Mr. T would be indicted. And so a lot of people will look at it and said, actually, it could be a yes, but not in the way that we think where he would be at the losing end of it, but in the way that perhaps he got into uh, the judiciary and actually put some evidence on the record of a lot of things that we need to know about. So that could also be in the cards and could undermine what you were just calling now this... Um, this belief in all of our structures or the uh, having confidence uh, in all of our structures. Yes. I want to bring back that point for a second here. You talked about this dwindling belief in yeah. our structures and our power structures. They're dying, uh, including religion. I wanted to ask you that because just a couple of days ago here too, this is the second time now that the Pope is pronouncing um at least that uh, we can't get too much into this here. We have to watch some of the, the language for YouTube, but that what happened in the particular theater of war right now might have been actually a provocation and that the people responding to the provocation are in their perfect rights. At least that's what's being implied here by the Pope, not once, but twice. I'm curious yeah. in your view, if it's possible that our religion and our belief structures are being crumbled to that point, is the Pope here seeing the numbers also and trying to realign public perception to try to rebuild and come out of this maybe next year after all the dust settles, after we've had all of these secrets revealed, as Cliff High talks about? What, what do you make of the Pope here really going against the narrative on this whole story? And again, watch some of those keywords here. Um, yeah. Um, so <laughs> if you can. I to say that so we don't get in trouble. Um, yeah. My immediate reaction, gut reaction, when I heard that the Pope had made that second comment was he, that's a strategic comment that is meant to uh, not only raise the bar on awareness and consciousness of what's going on, but to try to position the church as something that is blameless in the whole situation that, in other words, they're trying to gather some good um, attention for themselves because when it comes out how much bad stuff they've been involved in, it's not gonna be good. And right. so it struck me as a strategic move, one that is meant to make the, the papacy look a little better than it's gonna look in the future. Um, look a little better or or don't look as bad as it actually right. is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I appreciated that because I think it's something that people 
need to understand when, you know, um, I read about Russia every, almost every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say every day, I, a little something. Mm -hmm. um, that is just, to me, the whole thing, I was watching it build up over the last year. Um, it was just blatant uh, that what the Pope said is right, that uh, Putin was... Uh, Watch the words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll put it up on the screen, but people will understand here what's going on here. And again, it's it's completely against the mainstream narrative. And right yeah. now, too, the algos are very strong on this. They're trying to keep that narrative, even though every day we're getting news out of that theater of war that does not support the narrative. So that narrative is crumbling faster and faster. And it's interesting to see that uh, the well, Pope is on the other side of it. Along those lines, what I saw was that uh, the... The whole thing in Ukraine was over, and, and this was by September, by mid-September. And um, and the long-term effect of that was that the U.S. was perceived as having lost the war. So, yeah, and that's also going to further undermine the strength of the dollar, the petrol dollar. Of course, we know everything that's going on with gold. We'll talk about gold in a second here and silver. A lot of you are already asking about gold and silver in the chat. We'll get there. Um Let's take this quick segue here too, uh, Penny. You mentioned at the beginning of the show there that what you were seeing as you looked out to next year's um, uh, January, February, March, you were seeing this air of change. We were already in the change. Something had happened, had changed. And in the last couple of days, we seem to be seeing in our mainstream news and also from our analysts who are more on the uh, alternative side, all coming to the conclusion that the fuse has been lit. Now, in that respect, yeah. Bill Holter was on the show earlier today, uh, and we talked about his interview here with Greg Hunter, where he said, they're pulling the plug. It's game over. There's no more when, if this happens, whatever. It's happening now. And so he's seeing now, similar to you, big changes coming very, very soon to a town near you. A lot of them difficult for those who have not prepared, who pretended that everything was hunky-dory and who did not maybe uh, heed some of the warnings in terms of being like um, a master of self in all of this. So let's talk about that right now. The Fed just last week, uh, in the last couple of weeks here, I've raised race twice. Uh, in, in the news media this week, they even used the words Volkner era is back. So if we yeah. remember in the 80s, these interest rates uh, went up to 20, 20 some percent. Imagine that today. Me too. 23%. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, people can't afford five or 6% right now if they're locked into a 2.2% uh, mortgage rate right now and have to renew on these big mega mansions. So uh, the lit is fuse. Uh, the fuse is lit. I'm, I'm translating from French. But what, what okay, so what, first of all, do you agree with that, financially speaking here, that the people organizing the show, let me just bring this imagery back up on here uh, with our Fed Bullard. Actually, this is a good one. <laughs> Sell Marta Marcel. I remember this movie here with, um, <laughs> who, who's in that movie? Uh, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, I Eddie don't Murphy. Know. Eddie Murphy. You guys tell me that it was Eddie Murphy and it was, it, was a good co uh, it was a good comedy. But first of all, do you see also right now that that's what they're doing? They're not doing a head fake like they did the last couple of years where they're going to raise rate just to re remove them a month later. Do you see that they're actually engineering here some type of changeover event to create yeah. this power vacuum? How, how, okay. How do you explain that to the audience? How do you see it coming up? Um, a couple things. So there's a few things I would say. First of all, you never get involved in raising interest rates, causing inflation, unless you're trying to dig your way out of some pretty serious debt. Um, so that's part of the reason that they were, um, you know, increasing interest rates and causing shortages. I forget, um, I think it's 96 events in the US in the last few months to destroy uh, supply chains and food processing plants and things like that. So the combination, I think they were trying to uh, create artificial shortages, raise the interest rates, um, that would justify printing more money and they could get out of debt uh, but that didn't work. And I think they're having to bail. So one of the things that I saw, um, this is uh, mid-June to mid-July. This is right from the look-see. The American dollar has lost its reserve currency status. 
The effect of this will not be felt right away by the majority of Americans, but by next year, they will understand exactly what that means. The need to have something real to back our money will galvanize a lot of people into producing since it is only when you produce something that you can sell or trade that you gain a measure of stability. So that was the first thing I saw. And then by, um, oh gosh, I think it was September, um, banks, yeah, mid-September to mid-October, banks are having difficulties. Uh, and that was an understatement, okay? Armed guards at the door refuse to let anyone in who doesn't have an appointment and an existing account. Most people are stuck going to the ATMs to do whatever banking they need to do. But there were so many robberies happening at ATMs um, that people were now going to ATMs in caravans and standing guard for one another while deposits, payments, and withdrawals are made and then they you know, they protected one another and then they all left together. But um, it's, it's, we're at crunch time now. Um, and it does look like the, um, you know, like the <laughs> silver and gold and Bitcoin and the, some of the cryptos begin to go up. So uh, when I saw that it was down around 20,000 Bitcoin, it was like, whoa, that is some kind of volatility. Holy cow. Um, and that's that I think might be as low as it goes. And it's going to start up here um, again. And it's going to keep on going up. And gold and silver are going to keep on going up. Um, Warren Buffett got involved in the silver <laughs> yes, trade. Yes, yes, hold on a second here. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, my mic was muted here for a second. I want to set, set that up properly. A lot of uh, audience okay, members okay. are asking right now because they're saying, hey, wait a second. Where is all this money that's lost going? Is it going into gold? Is it going into silver? Is it going into crypto? A lot of people are wondering what's happening because I was just showing on the screen the sea of red here, the carnage that's already happening uh, yeah. on our markets. And uh, Bill Holter was saying today too that tomorrow, Friday, is the triple witching. He was talking about $3 trillion of bonds that need to uh, uh, resolve. And he said he remembers um, a similar event, a similar setup, back in 1987 when he was sitting at a trading desk and he said uh, mm -hmm. the markets didn't open on the monday and it didn't open on the tuesday I so I, I, right because i was asking him i said how do we explain this to the people who don't understand he says you won't have to <laughs> like everybody will just know <laughs> i mean it's going to be so obvious uh, to yeah. everyone looking now it's obvious to you and, and, and me uh, when we are looking at the news, you've been forecasting uh, similar things for the last couple of months in your looksies but let me bring up uh, the idea of the crypto market here. So in the last couple of days, you, you, okay, so hold on. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts. There's a lot here. You mentioned <laughs> Bitcoin at 20,000 could be the low. I have other analysts who say we could actually test $4,000. Depending, and here's the, here's the big caveat there. We okay. don't know on one hand how much money they've actually printed. And we don't know all of the liabilities that come from the over-the-counter derivatives. There's a lot of unknowns. So a lot of people who are predicting the markets, they're going with the numbers that they're being told by the mainstream media. The amount of money printed, the money of the amount of gold at Fort Knox, all the, the inflation numbers, but all that is wrong. So your guess is as good as mine as to how low all of this is going to go during this implosion and then transition to the new world so that being said don't want to scare anybody but it's always a good day to take profits if you can take profits okay. and leave money on the side <laughs> so just so you know so having said that here here's my question we're looking at now uh, on the screen the total market cap here this is just the last month and we were at 1.3 trillion and now we're at uh, 900 or so a billion here today now if you look at crypto it's lost a lot more than silver and gold has in the same period and i asked bill holter earlier today i said why is that bill what's going on and he says well gc it's simple gold and silver are real things <laughs> that's his point of view and he's saying a lot of people right now are in deep 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 um, trouble with their margin calls and so they're selling everything that's not bolted to the floor to try to cover those margin calls and this is why tomorrow might be a big day for them also yeah. now you just mentioned here that this is when a lot of the population will realize that we need to return to sound money, or as Bill Holter and Andy Shuckman were saying here, real things, real shit. Real. <laughs>
<laughs> right? And this is where yeah. perhaps we as the population decide just how much we want to be involved in fake financial assets as we have been before in this debt slavery model. Explain that how in the books, the robes told you about this event that would come where everything would stop for a couple of days and people would suddenly realize the value of things, of real things, and how from then on, we decided to create these new economic structures for us as opposed to these systems that are designed to siphon energy from us. I know that's a long question. It's a long setup, but there's a lot of new people just dropping off CNN, watching our show, because CNN doesn't make sense anymore. All the economic news don't make sense anymore, uh, but they're trying to figure out. So try <laughs> try as best you can here to unmuddy the waters there, Penny. Okay. Um, so let's see. Where do I begin? Um, so let's go to, um, to silver and gold for just a moment and, okay. and crypto, just the, the market and what the markets are doing. I did see that there was a small chance that crypto could go down to 12 to 15, but it didn't it, it it didn't look like much of a chance. I don't know if it went down to four, I would say, woohoo, I'm buying some more. But um, but the problem or the issue, um, if it drops to four, is people are going to lose their belief in that whole system. And, they, and that will be a problem. It will go up again. I, but, you know, we'll see. I thought 20. Um, when I saw it was down to 20, I thought, you know what? I don't think it's going much lower. So I'll leave it at that. That's kind of vague, but we'll leave it at that. It would be nice if it didn't go too much lower. Although it might if, and I shouldn't say not if, when the markets close and the banks are not open, uh, people are going to draw from their crypto accounts in order to come up with money. So it may drop just because people are taking cash out of the system. So uh, having said that, one of the things the little men in brown robes um, emphasized again and again was that we did not end up with dollars, that it was money on screen. I, I thought, it, you know, this was back in 80, 81. And I thought, oh, look at that. The, all the money is on television because we didn't have personal computers then either. Um, but there were these screens and they showed well, these financial transactions going by. Um, and I thought, wow, that's that's amazing. So we're so a couple of things. One is we are moving toward becoming, I'm going to say, less tied to a planet. The processes of doing that are many, many. One of the things that you have to go through if you're moving toward becoming a space-based civilization, and we have a long way to go, so there's a lot of stages yet to go through, but one of the early steps is that you begin to put a lot of belief into things that are not real, okay? In other words, you begin to abstract the entire reality to be only energy. That's where we're headed over the long run. Now, that may take us two, three, four hundred years before we um, get to the next step even, but that's the, we're, that's the direction we're heading. So um, as we learn to grow food in, in high rises, it's not in the ground, it's up in the air. And that's another signal that we're moving toward not being tethered to a planet. The money system, as we move into abstracted money, digital money, we're moving away from what's real. Um, as we move into personal responsibility and governance councils, local governance councils, we move away from the big daddy government ideas. And you cannot be part of a space-based group if you're not personally responsible for every thought and every attitude and every word that comes out of your mouth and every behavior. Um, and so all of that is happening, and we, we need to see that there's really a wonderful um, direction that we're going. It is looking a little chaotic, for sure, and people who are really counting on uh, being able to retire and have their pensions and things like that, 
I, I don't, I think you need a new dream. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, there are new dreams that are out there that are waiting to be dreamed. New goals waiting to be um, gone after. So it's not the end of the world. It's just the end of the old paradigm. We're moving from the paradigm of the great clockwork, like mm -hmm. Descartes and his great clockwork, to the paradigm of the great thought, the great consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a hundred years already that we're into that paradigm. Um, but now we're really at crunch time. So you you just gave me a sound bite there when you said, Hey, you need a new dream. That might be harsh, but at the same time, it's so yeah. incredibly powerful because yeah. we are co-creating our reality. Yes, and if we, we only knew that we were not in prison, that there is in fact no jail, there's actually no door that we can create, and the sky's the limit. Actually, there's no limit, as somebody reminded me last week when I That's said right. that. It's an expression. Uh, yeah. we can we can dream the biggest dreams ever and make that happen and this is the fight we're fighting now to remove this bug on our back who's using that creative force of humans to create the own prison of our demise that's what we're killing right now with what right. we're seeing in the news so that's Again, it sounds kind of creepy, it sounds kind of weird, and it's scary for a lot to realize that perhaps they have to change the worldview. I do understand that, but I would do want to emphasize that that is the biggest opportunity humanity has had for maybe thousands of years. We're here now. It's an exciting time. Now, I want to go back. So Allison says, absolutely, I agree with you also. I want to go back to this. Ben Bernanke was on TV today, of course. Uh, or yesterday or two days ago saying, oh, we have, uh, uh, let me actually quote him properly. It's just so ridiculous. U.S. economy has a decent chance of avoiding a recession. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is the same guy, of course, who told us that the subprime was contained. <laughs> Remember, there was no problem with the mortgage-backed securities. <laughs> okay. So take that for what it's worth, guys. But at the same time, Penny, this is where the issue is. On one hand, people are seeing the Bernanke uh, messaging for the last two days. Oh, everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. It's a soft landing. We're, you know, uh, we, the government, we're going to take care of you type of, type of scenario. And on the other hand, we're still getting some mainstream news saying, hey, we might be in the Volcker era. So they're talking about 20% interest rates. And people don't recognize the huge ramifications that's going to have on their purchasing power and their quality of life in a very, very short time. So there's that. We're, we're dealing yeah. with two oppositions and we're trying to figure it out and this is why these conversations are important to have with many different points of view so that we can get a better picture of here of how things are gonna maybe unfold let's go back now to this idea of gold and silver you touched on it a few people are asking well is this new okay uh, let me backtrack a little bit more you said something really important here as we detach from this planet and we start rejoining our family our space brothers and and, and, and sisters we're probably not going to be hauling gold and silver in our spacecraft to go transact on other planets. In some cases, that might be the case because that's what they want, but in most cases, not. So we are going to be called as humans to transform the way that we exchange value, right? So that's what the robes were talking about in that book. That's um, right. And we're going to find better ways at accounting for that value without having the middleman who's always taking a cut without doing anything and actually killing the host. This is the process we're in now. So a lot of people looked at the crypto market this week, the naysayers who said, see, I told you it's just digital air. You're going to lose your shirts. Yes, yes, yes. There is warning with a lot yeah. of crypto. A lot of those are what we call shit coins, right? So <laughs> buyer beware. But at the <laughs> same time, we are going to be called to live a, a transformation of our exchange of value. Yep. What do you say to the people there to encourage them? Because this is going to be a huge education, re-education for each and every one of us. <laughs> We've been in this prison and we're all suffering from, uh, what's it called again? What's the syndrome? Uh, Stockholm syndrome, right? And we love our money and we love our control systems, but actually we don't. And we have to realize now that this is going to change, but it's scary for a lot of people. It, it, explain to them a little bit more yeah, how they yeah. can go through this easier than what perhaps it's looking like right now as a huge insurmountable task. Okay, so Bernanke aside, <laughs> when you look at the future, you have to have an idea of what can come of all of the stuff that's happening. Mm. And when you don't have that vision, I just read a thing. Um, 
I forget who it was by, but it says people without a vision will perish. Period. That's a, an old time saying. And from I think it was in Proverbs. It's in the Bible. Proverbs. People without a vision will perish. So um, there's, and then there's uh, another saying that uh, Goethe, Wolfgang, whatever his whole name is, uh, Goethe said, whatever you can dream or do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. And we have to we have to do something like that. We have to be bold and we have to say, okay, where is this going? Uh, read Life After Google. Um, you will begin to see where we're going and what's happening. All of the things that, um, one of the things that I saw in the look-see was that the whole 5G thing just goes away. Just people quit investing in it. They quit building it out. And I'm looking at that going, wow, what's, what's happening there? It, it was superseded. First of all, we couldn't get the materials to finish building out the 5G thing. Um, it doesn't really go away 100%, but it's superseded by what I thought was, I'm going to say 6G or 7G or 8G or something like that. And, and I think we're in a, a phase here where the discoveries that we're making in science are opening doors left and right. If you don't have a vision of where we can go, then you're going to back away and you're going to try to clamp down on what is happening. You're going to be somebody that's in opposition to this huge wave of change, which is moving into that new paradigm. And, and you won't have a voice in that. If you don't, if we don't speak up and put our voices into where that wave of change is going, it's going to roll right over us. And bad people with bad agendas are going to be in charge. Why? Because we didn't speak up. Because we didn't contribute. Because we didn't have a vision. Because we didn't join um, and say, now, wait a minute. Uh, we like this, but what does it do to people? We have to engineer things um, much more wisely, much differently. We can't be <laughs> engineering things that destroy us. Um, that's just, that doesn't fly. Right. Um, we won't get anywhere. We'll have some lessons, but we'll eventually discover that, well, I don't want to go into too much science, but... Um, you know, just just let's look at the electrical system. Um, 60 cycles per second is destructive to the human cell. But when you yeah. get a, below that, it's constructive to the human cell. Why did we pick that frequency? I, I wonder know? why, Penny. I just I just can't fathom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand why also they put all of these weird things in the cocktails they're trying to push to you. And well, all the, yeah, that... <laughs> Yeah, I, I wonder what they're trying to do to us. I can't, I can't possibly imagine. Okay, we we, we can't touch that too much. To speak up. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, well, Ben Thompson is raising a good point. Uh, and guys, you can go check him out. He's got cool content. Uh, he's got his own YouTube channel now. Go check him out at Inspired Action here on oh. YouTube. Really cool concept. Uh, congratulations, uh, Ben. So please do go and subscribe. Hey, I subscribed to that last time. I Is haven't you? heard of that. What is that? It sounds <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I'm already subscribed. Okay, that works. So guys, go and subscribe there. No, he's, Ben's really cool. Uh, but he's saying here, yeah, Cliff High is a galactic network card. He, he talked about basically uh, inter space modem and what he's talking about is the ability to connect to the galactic internet basically yeah. Um, yeah. now there is a, a technical way to do that and this is what cliff and some other people are trying to do but there's also the human way to connect to that grid and right yeah. now we are prevented to connect to that grid because of everything penny just talked about the 60 yeah. cycles the the towers all of these things that we can Right. But imagine now, as we change these these um, uh, structures and we start empowering ourselves, the new abilities, I say new abilities, old abilities that we actually have that have been put on lockdown suddenly will be available to us. Isn't yeah. that amazingly positive and encouraging? Because here's the thing, uh, Patricia and Jean-Claude, wait, wait, wait. 
So is she saying, Penny, is, is Penny saying there's no good news until January? That's hard to believe. No, there's a lot of good news in my books. But Penny, how do you answer this question for yourself? Well, one piece of good news is that it looks like the war in Ukraine is over by September. That's <laughs> nothing to sniff at. Um, Absolutely. So there's there are difficulties. Um, you know, one of the th things that I see is that people who are of like minds, who are creative and generative in their thinking, they're finding one another. I think that's very good news. So mm -hmm. under the cover of all the chaos that's happening, people are recognizing who is on the same page that they are on. And so you have to look at those kinds of things and say, would that be happening if we weren't forced into that? Because humans tend to be a little Complacent. bit- Complacent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and let me just add this. Um, the I think the um, I, I'm not sure when it happened, but um, I, uh, let's see, let's back up, let's back up. So for most of my life, um, the airwaves have been controlled by the government, okay? Um, and the television stations and the radio stations would buy a certain frequency band that they could use and they could do, you know, whatever they wanted, as long as it didn't violate the Federal Communications Commission thing. Mm -hmm. So there was a portion of that whole spectrum, the spectrum out there is humongous. And we have this little tiny slice that the government was like, that's ours. Um, and you're under our, you're under our control. So um, the a couple things happened back in, I think it was 85. Um, maybe, maybe it was after that. I'm not sure about the date. Never mind the date. The um, spectrum was opened up to people to to experiment for free. 2.4 gigahertz was the first part of that spectrum that was opened up for people. Didn't have to buy a license. They could use it for anything, um, etc. And then 5G was opened up. And now another chunk has been opened up that goes up, I forget, like, I don't know if it's 10 or 12 or 20 G. Those are areas that are going to bring massive amounts of innovation. And within those frequency, within that spectrum, if we can be smart enough to say which one of these frequencies is constructive interference, right and which one is destructive, then we can begin to innovate um, the kinds of technology that nurture the human being. So um, that's, you know, I get very excited about the possibilities of our technology. I hear, you know, people like Schwabi saying all kinds of crap, and I'm like, you know, nye, nye, nye. <laughs> I, I yeah, think whatever, it's... dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Well, well let, me, let me echo some of that sentiment, too. Um, in, in one way, we're detailing a lot of bad things. For example, all of this um, fertilizer <laughs> issue we're getting across the world. And in some cases, people say, well, that's bad. It's going to contribute to food shortage, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, 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 that is all true. But also the opportunity yeah. there, and I think Penny uh, mentioned this in the last show, we know that these fertilizers are actually destructive to our food supply and also to the ingredients and nutrients that we bring into our bodies. This perhaps is an occasion for us to review the way we re-enrich our soils. So again, yes, it's negative, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for us. Now, in terms of the censorship, yeah. uh, here in Canada, they're going in the opposite direction. They're not uh, <laughs> helping us um, be more free in terms of free speech. But this yeah. too, I see eventually as a positive because people will find a way life finds a way and we're seeing now the momentums with the mr t's with the elon musks and twitter uh and perhaps new ventures that are going to start competing here with this old dying structure and i think they're all poised to do that and they're all waiting for the same thing the death of the petrodollar the ability to bribe the ability to um uh, create these uh uh, spending deficits so that they can finance wars around the planet. Once that is crippled, and we're seeing it now, and Penny's just alluding to what's happening 
this month and next month and probably to the end there in September in that theater of war, uh, we're coming to the end of that uh, scenario as well. So those are huge positive changes for humanity. Yeah. You know, uh, let me let me introduce kind of a downer for a minute. Okay. <laughs> I want to go back to something that you brought up earlier. Um, I don't know if anybody read the report from Kim.com about the amount of debt owed by the United States. He was adding up all of the debt. And I forget the exact numbers, but it was something like 253 or $273 trillion. And if he then took all of the land and all of the industry and all of the resources and all of the gold and all of the silver and all of every asset that we could possibly come up with, we would still have some outrageous amount of debt trillion left over, which came down to two point some million dollars per per person, I think it was or per taxpayer. And maybe it was uh, 700,000 per person, but uh, not everybody's paying taxes. So the taxpayers had, you know, if you figured it on the basis of who, how many are paying taxes was uh, two point something million. And it was so, it's like, okay, people, we need to wake up and we need to speak up um, because we're digging ourselves a hole. Yeah. And I think we, if we can understand, um, I think Germany just got done paying off their World War II debt just recently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that's correct or they're close to it, but it's pretty close if they didn't already do it. Um, and the we are if we are so unappreciated by the rest of the world we have squandered our goodwill we have squandered our integrity um we need to stand up and and begin to communicate in such a way that we have some integrity that we demonstrate that and that we um communicate with others um say hey um what can we do i think we're going to end up with a jubilee honest to god there's no other option otherwise it would be the theater of the absurd well, that's a good point. And Bill Holter was saying here today, too, um, it's hard to understand how this is going to happen. We've seen countries and dollars go to, or uh, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Not countries, but uh, not regimes, but empires uh, go oh. into the night and go to nothing. We've seen dollars go to zero, but we've yep. never seen what we're about to see now, which is the combination of everything here on the planet living yeah. through this huge reset. So he was talking today about this first man-made reset, as you're saying, where the people in control now are trying to stay in control. And then there's another one that comes after that, where reality really, really hits. And this is where these ast uh, astronomical numbers that you're talking about uh, suddenly have to be actually dealt with, right? So either it's written off, <laughs> or either it's actually paid, or also, other values have to be repriced because what Kim.com is missing in that part there is that, yes, at the current value of gold and silver, there's not enough to pay the debt we're talking about. But at uh, gold, 100,000 per ounce, uh, right, or more, right, silver, the same thing. Let's get into that now, too. Uh, in the last interview I did with um, Jim Willie, and uh, I believe Cliff is of the same opinion, too, on his sub stack, and he's something to me and, 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 uh, Jason for a couple of weeks ago, that he was under the impression that China and Russia were colluding together now to reach at the first point, the first point, a $10,000 per ounce gold price. So we're hearing the bad news about Evergrande. There's a lot going on there too. Uh, yeah. There's this huge arbitrage opportunity here as the ruble continues to uh, gain strength here. Again, against all the narrative in the mainstream news. Uh, but you see the momentum of this move from Russia uh, backing the ruble with gold and what it's already created here in the last couple of months. So imagine move forward two months here to the end of the scenario you were just talking about and the collusion here with China. Is it possible... A penny, and, and maybe go back to some of your looksies. That by the fall, we see a ten thousand uh, dollar per ounce gold price, and what does that do to silver? A lot of the audience members are asking. Yeah, I think um, I didn't see ten thousand for gold in the fall, um, or even by the end of the year. But next year, 
um, we may even surpass that. Mm. Um, what I saw was like we were halfway there by the end of the year. Um, and it does roll up pretty rapidly. I mean, it just it blows your mind when you look, when you watch it. It's like, that can't possibly be correct. I must be seeing that wrong. Mm -hmm. It will go up over 5,000, but I, well, by the time I got to December, it was only at 5,000. Silver was going up. It looked like it went way up and then it dropped back. So, um, and I, you know, I think we're at a, at a time. Where hold, on, hold on, hold on just a second. Don't go too far. Repeat what you just said for silver. Silver goes up. It looked like it went up over 800, maybe 900, maybe even 1,000. And then it started dropping back. And I, I don't know why it would drop back when gold kept going. Mm -hmm. And so did Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, the, and the time frame for silver, what you're seeing now, that's the fall time frame? That was, that was by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Because what you just said, too, kind of makes sense. If you just look at the USD ruble chart, uh, again, this is uh, wow. Jim Woolley who was doing the math for me here the other day. Uh, at 60, I believe that accounted for a 27 or $3,000 uh, gold price if you look at the arbitrage here going on. So at 58, wow. it could be even higher. Uh, so again, go watch the episode, folks, uh, with Jim Woolley just a couple of days ago. It's still on my YouTube channel. Uh, uh, for now so we're already seeing a huge price in gold in reality what people are paying for it to get their energies uh in europe right now but we haven't seen that at the comex or the lbma yet now what you're seeing uh, i believe uh, uh, let me ask you the question directly are you seeing that in reality in our mainstream news we might be halfway there in the fall where we see a five thousand six thousand dollar gold per ounce price is that what you're seeing yeah. or are you seeing more of this obfuscation where in the back that's the real price but on the mainstream news they're not telling you yet what do you know it looked like it was a real price the games um you know what at some point we have to wake up and say look we're the ones making all the rules what we're the people it's our reality system mm -hmm. what are we doing making rules that we can't live with and when the game turns out to be a game at what point do you stop mm -hmm. at what point do you say oh okay we we need to revise the game <laughs> and, right. and it has to be real and it has to take into account human beings and their needs what i actually saw in the fall was people did not care about gold and silver as much as they cared about can i get electricity there was some sort of issue with electricity and when i first saw that i thought well that's probably for africa or someplace like that and then i, I get a letter like three, four days later from my electric company that says, oh, sorry, um, we just want to inform you that we are doing our best to provide electricity and we are a network of cooperatives, but there's somebody above us. Uh, and I forget what their name was. I remember thinking it, their name was like miso, like the, you know, the miso soup kind of thing. Um, hmm. But that group that whatever it is starts with an MI, that they control the bigger grid. And they said they did a study last year. And that study revealed that there was not going to be enough electricity to keep everybody supplied in 11 states. And Michigan is one of those states. And right down the Mississippi, all the way to the Gulf Core or Gulf Coast, mm -hmm. um, 11 states are, they basically said, you will have rolling blackouts this year. And well, we're already seeing it now in Texas. They're talking about these record uh, demand uh, for electricity amid this heat wave now. Uh, so I agree with you on that. And also, just to add a point to what you were saying, this was forecasted quite some time ago in the WebBot reports in the same data sets where we were looking at the Democratic uh, Party imploding which we're seeing now, if you look yeah. at their, 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 even their internal approval ratings, which are absolutely abysmal, it was in those same data sets also where we saw the $600 silver, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So uh, it seems that we're getting into that time frame now. Uh, it is, of course, what Bill Holter believes. Uh, go check out that episode from today. He says, yes, they're pulling the plug. The, the fuse is already lit. There's no more when this come. It's in motion now. Right. So, wow, you talked about... <laughs> 
I wonder why the silver would go down. That's interesting, though, from the eight, nine hundred and go back down. You well, said that more looked, than you know I should have gone further. It went down and it stayed down for a little bit. Then I thought it crept up and then it went down again. And I had the impression that somebody was desperate to keep that from going up any further. And, and it was not the um, government, it was corporations. They were trying to keep the price at a place where they could afford to buy it. In this interview uh, with uh, Cliff High and, and, and Jason M4, Cliff was mentioning that that scenario you're just describing could in fact happen at some point um, as a reprieve from these high prices so that the companies who actually need the silver, the cell phones, the um, breakaway civilization, the space stuff, all that stuff, we need to get silver. And they would come up with all these shenanigans to try to get silver uh, yeah. from the population, including perhaps finding a way temporarily to lower the price so that things could work. Um, I actually asked this question to John Williams from Shadow Stats, and he said, yeah, they're going to come up with a bunch of schemes to get your silver. And he says, don't let them take it out of your cold, dead hands. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So he's like, hold on to your silver. I agree with that as well. So that could be one of the scenarios, of course, we could live. Fascinating times indeed. At the same time, I'm looking at this paper stuff at the bank. I was at the bank today, and I was trying to get some cash out. I'm going on vacation uh, this weekend. And uh, they wanted me to sign a little paper of why I wanted to take my money out. <laughs> it was just like, uh, because it's my money. That's all you need to know. <laughs> So they seem to be very confused by that statement. They were looking at me like, uh oh, <laughs> this guy doesn't yeah. understand. He's a slave. You know, yeah. that's what was funny. Benny, we're already in the hour mark. Man, holy shit, we had a lot to talk about. Is there anything else, either in the look see or anything else that's coming up on uh, consciousness on fire that you want to share with the audience before we go? You know, I think the only thing I would say um, is that jobs continue. I, I want to encourage people to go into business for themselves as much as possible because jobs keep going away and it looks like we i'm going to shorten what i said in the looks jobs are fading there's a an attitude of well, we're working from home now we were told to work from home okay so we're all working from home and we discover how much easier it is how much more productive we can be um, how much we can save because we're not having to do hair and clothes and gasoline and parking fees in downtown parking garages and all that kind of stuff. And that whole thing um, morphs. It morphs into being told, go back to the office, and people are very choosy about whether they'll go back or not. Their attitude is, uh, you know what, Mr. Corporation, I don't think I like what you're doing. I've heard some things about what you're involved in, and I'm not going back. Yeah, I'm working from home. If you want my services, this is, you know, so it becomes a strategic attitude that begins developing in the fall, like September, October, um, in, and through the rest of the year, this attitude of, I'm not going to work because I want that corporation to fail. I was so shocked to see that. It was like, oh my gosh. Um, so th th to me, that said, people are waking up. Um, they're beginning to use their power in right. their own individual way. Um, and that uh, is part of the turning point that I think we're at. Well, you know, just like I went online when this whole... COVID situation started. It was one of those catalysts for me. I had been working on uh, creating a YouTube channel for a while, but my guides were all saying, ah, it's not time, it's not time. But when this came up, it was like, okay, that was a huge catalyst and here I am yeah. today. I'm happy, absolutely happy I did so. But you know, a lot of people, um, they weren't affected in the same way with COVID, at least at first, but then eventually reality hit them. And for a lot of people, and I want to have your take on this, uh, Penny. For a lot of people who work for the federal government, at least here in Canada, other jurisdictions around the world too, those who didn't want to take the cocktail were eventually forced out of their job. They were humiliated in front of their colleagues. They were treated as traitors. 
Within minutes, they had been removed their security access codes, all of this stuff, and they were sent to the street, what they call LWAP, leave without pay, LWAP, even though they were stellar employees, perfect performance reviews, on track for, you know, the next promotion, et cetera, uh, these people were completely ostracized uh, from their job. Now, what you're saying here in terms of you're encouraging people to become masters of self and not work for somebody else, here's what's happening now. Even the liberal um, caucus here in the majority uh, wanted uh, our boss here to remove these federal COVID mandates for employers and also for the travel here in Canada. We were hearing all of those rumbles. And as we were doing a live show on Monday, finally, it all started coming out. The leaks came out and they've just now announced the removal of the restrictions here uh, in Canada for travel for the unwilling yes uh yes it's a victory so i'll, I'll say yes there i, I want to continue my thought but they also wow. finally all of a sudden out of the blue removed the policy for the federal workers and basically they just said okay we've ostracized you we've treated you as traitors we kicked you out on the curb with no paycheck we humiliated you in front of your colleagues right. but as of june 20th come back to work and perform your duties <laughs> So these employees, uh, how is that going to work exactly, Penny? Yeah. They've been on the street for five months thinking, okay, I thought I was doing a public service, right? Most of these people are good, hardworking people who wanted to serve the public. That's why they were part of this public service sector. And they soon realized that they weren't working for the benefit of the public. There was something gravely wrong with the situation. Right. What do you say to those people right now to say, hey, hold on a second, Maybe as Penny as Kelly here, I should see that as an opportunity, as a catalyst for change and as a fire up my ass <laughs> to really, you know, uh, spring forward and create that abundance for myself so that I'm not attached to these right. evil parasitical mother effort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry for all my French there. I was okay. trying to find the words. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What are you I... these people, Penny? I would say keep going, uh, stay with, stay independent. If you go back to work for that, you're not going to be comfortable because you know too much and your conscience is going to bother you. Number one, it'll help your paycheck for sure. If you, you know, if you're in debt up to the eyeballs, but the, those systems are not going to survive. Um, and so I would really encourage you to find some way to be of service to your fellows, to start your own business, um, to get something going that you love to do. The whole thing, why do people want leisure? Why do people want to retire? What's the driver behind that? You know what it is? It's because they can finally be who they really are. And that I think is important. It's not because they're lazy. It's because they're tired of being something that they aren't or having to pretend that there's somebody that they're not. You can start a business of your own, be doing something you love, be who you really are and make enough money to get, you know, get where you want to get to. So, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great advice. The two things I'm retaking from that also is like, you're conscious, first of all, and two, it won't work because you know too much at this point. It's very hard to put that genie back in the bottle and to cool. pretend, right? So, man, I just can't. I just can't fathom being in the job of these policymakers and these uh, human rights court, uh, human uh, um, how do you call it? Yeah. Human services, HR, HR, yeah, human resources departments <laughs> trying yeah. to deal with all of this right now. It's complete nonsense. And here's the thing, Penny, just to make it worse, uh, I just need to add this. And in the same announcement, they said, but if there's another wave in September, uh, we might bring back the mandates. And also, we're transitioning now because two isn't enough, three isn't enough. You're going to need four or five. We're transitioning now to a fully up to date status. I, I'm, I'm choosing my words here. Yeah. And somebody asked, oh, Okay, so you're retaking these employees who have zero right now, but you're saying you're transitioning to three, four, or five to be fully up to date by default. So are you going to fire them again in the fall because they don't have three, four, or five? <laughs> yeah, you know, I see a beginning push after the middle of July to introduce a whole new set of fears. Uh, so, uh, you know, 
I didn't really say that in the in the look see, but I well, we can keep that for the next month look see because I'm also tracking a lot of that too, and I want yes, like I said earlier, there are some victories in some of the narrative breakdown right now. We have to take those victories a little as they may be, and we have to keep pushing and and not pretend that everything is okay, even though we have those little victories. Because in some cases, I feel that some of the power structure is giving away these little victories right now in order to buy time to reintroduce what they really want to do by exactly. the fall, right? And kind of like uh, make people go away and, and and relieve the pressure. Really, it's a pressure escape yeah. valve is what they're doing right now, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, but I yeah. could be convinced otherwise, and I'm still looking at the data, and I look forward to having that next conversation with you uh, next month, Benny. In the meantime, of course, folks, you can support Penny here at consciousnessonfire.com as well as on her Patreon here at patreon.com forward slash Penny Kelly. Penny, um, in terms of the courses, the books, where are you at on that last book? Are you are you close to publishing? Give an update to the audience members. I'm not close. I've, I've got the first draft, you know, pretty much. It needs polishing. It needs work. But... Um, I'm really, it's all about, hey, this is the world we could build. Here's some ideas. Um, and the, I've got a little workbook section that I've been adding to each uh, chapter that says, here's the questions that we have to ask and discuss if we want to get past the old system without making it bad and into the new system with a sense of excitement. So, yeah, that's- I love, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I want to. I'm keeping. I'm keeping on. Daphne has has been such a wonderful supporter. You know, come on, we need this, we need that, and she's handling so much stuff. So, I have been. I've got. I took a little bit of time off from teaching this summer just so I could write. Mm -hmm. So, gotta be done before the fall. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to the next book. And Marjorie says, yes, I can't wait for the next book, uh, Penny. So that's great. Uh, folks, so you can find that again on consciousnessonfire.com or pennykelly.com. There you can see uh, a host of all of our eBooks. And um, you just mentioned something about we have a world to build. And I wanted to maybe end on this one. Cliff High's um, Substack a couple of days ago, May 25. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, of course, <laughs> is, to is to rebuild this world. I encourage you guys to go read this. It very, very eloquently said, and it just might, just might spark you into activating your own personal mission. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much, everyone. This was a break in the clouds with the amazing Penny Kelly. I'm John Claude at Beyond Mystic. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Au revoir. Uh, hasta pronto. <laughs> <laughs>